start this video by showing you guys my vineyard. <laughs> That's not a lot, but, um, and it's December. So yes, it de definitely does not look very lush and um, beautiful right now. We moved into this house four or five years ago. And when we moved in here, these vines were completely out of control. Um, there were um, four main vines growing from the ground and they have climbed at minimum 30 feet into the pine trees that we have back here. They were all tangled in the um, electrical wire um, and any fruit that they produced was completely unreachable. Um, and so we decided to completely fix up the vineyard, our little tiny grapevines. Um, and the first thing that we had to do is we had to be quite destructive. We had to tear those vines out of the trees and out of the power cords and lop them off um, and start fresh. Um, we had to bend the trunks in ways that they weren't used to bending. Um, there was a lot of scarring. There was a lot of, um, there was a lot of pain associated for my grapevines. Um, and the next year they grew so beautifully, but still didn't have the energy to produce much fruit because grapes produce fruit on the second year of growth. Okay. Now on the second year, and then now on this fourth year, it's absolutely outstanding. I get boxes full, and we only actually end up having three vines now. One was beyond repair. But this vineyard needed to be tended to really heavily in order for it to be productive. And the psalm that we're going to read today in the Bible study is about tending God's vineyard and bringing it back to its former glory. So we're going to head in because it's a little bit chilly and we're going to start our Bible study. So I'm back inside and I've got my warm tea, got a little gray here. I should grab a spoon to stir it. So if you want to uh, grab yourself something warm or something cold, I don't know, maybe you live in Australia. <laughs> maybe it's really nice and warm there. Um, but here, it's kind of chilly, so I'm having some tea, and kids are watching TV again, and I'm going to dive into the Word of God, and I really like doing these videos because it means that I can force myself into the Word of God even when I'm not really there yet, okay? All right, so um, we talked about the grapevine, and we're going to jump right in and read the responsorial psalm. I'm, I know you're not going to be able to see this, but the responsorial psalm, and if you want the printed version, um, feel free to go to the link that I'll have, and you can download it. Um, it's from Psalm 80, <clears throat> and it's verses 2 and 3, 15, 16, and 18, 19. Psalms were meant to be sung, so just because they're not in order necessarily doesn't mean that anything's wrong with that. It's just like singing, oh, we're going to sing the first, third, and fourth verse of this song. Okay. But I will not torture you with my singing voice because I have other gifts and that is not one of them. But we'll go ahead and read the responsorial psalm today for our study. Psalm 80. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim shine forth. Rouse your power and come to save us. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. 
may your help be with the man of your right hand. With the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong, we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. In my um, Bible here, I have opened up to Psalm 80 just so I could get a little bit more of a picture of the things around it. And the title, the like the little subtitle says, Prayer to Restore God's Vineyard. And there's a little thing in here, a little note that says, Psalm 80 was a community lament in time of military defeat. Using the familiar image of Israel as a vineyard, the people complain that God has broken down the wall protecting the once splendid vine brought from Egypt. They pray that God will again turn to them and use the Davidic king to lead them to victory. So you can see why some people would be a little bit like, it's, it's a baby, how can he like lead us to victory? But the vine imagery is something that's really commonly used and you'll see it a lot through the old and new testament um so i will read my reflection that i've written down here and we can go over some of the questions so in this psalm the writer is asking god to show him his face in order to save him what do we know of the face of the Old Testament God? Okay, think about that. We know that those who gazed upon his glorious face were expected to die. That you weren't going to see God and live. But this psalmist is asking, let us see your face to save us. Right? So why would the psalmist want to gaze upon his face? Is it possible that he knew that this life was nothing compared to the new life that would happen after death? And what are we willing to sacrifice in order to receive that new life? If you have something that you wanted to put in the comments about what you would be willing to sacrifice or what you have sacrificed, or what you know someone had to sacrifice in order to receive that new life, um, then feel free to add it to the comments so we can have a little chat. I know with my grapevines, they sacrificed years of growing. They did. They were growing in the wrong direction, and that had to be cut off. That had to just <coughs> snip. Gone. They were growing in the wrong direction and they weren't being fruitful in the ways that they were supposed to be fruitful. And as humans, we oftentimes, we just need to lop it off. There are things that we do that we need to change. Um, one thing that I personally struggle with is I have a clutter addiction, which doesn't seem spiritual, but it is. I grew up very poor and we saved everything we saved everything anytime somebody had something by the side of the road we were like get that take it home look it's a lot for five bucks or something or we could use that for something else or you know and i haven't grown out of that i really haven't um mostly because, <laughs> because you know times are still financially tight but um I can trust that God will provide me with the things that I need. And it is okay for me to just lop off that intense desire to accumulate things. Because I'm putting my trust in goodwill more than I am God's will. Um, for those of you wondering, no, I don't rehearse these things. <laughs> I just kind of shoot from the hip, so you get what you get. So but the next question I have written down here is, the stanzas of the psalm refer to God as a shepherd, a gardener, and all-powerful. So 
he's the first part says, O shepherd of Israel, hearken from your throne upon the cherubim shine forth, rouse your power, come and save us. And then the gardener is tending the vineyard, and then all powerful was the kind of phrase that I put together for this to show that God is helping and he's creating and he's saving and giving us new life and his name is powerful so i am wondering how do these traits affect you personally so how does a shepherd imagery instill hope in you remember we're in the first week of advent so hope how does the image of a shepherd instill hope in you and then what about a gardener or a vineyard worker or the person who owns the vineyard? How does, which one affects you more? Which one is more your speed? To me, I don't, I mean, I have chickens and a cat, but I have a big garden. And so the garden imagery does speak to me more. I can go right out there and see my vines and see what needs to be trimmed off. And every year they get a pruning. No, it's not as severe as the first year. But every year they do get a pruning. And things that are growing the wrong direction get cut off or bent back to where they're supposed to go. Um, I treat it with fertilizer, so I load it with poop. Um, so if you find yourself in a stinky situation, it might just be fertilizer. Um, I recommend if you especially live in an area where there are vineyards nearby, even if you're not a wine drinker, um, which I'm not, go to these vineyards just, just to look at them. Ask them how they're tended, um, Ask them, like, why do they do things like this? And, and see if you can bring it back to your own soul. And when you have gotten it to a point that you can see that you can do that in your own life, then you can start to see how much better the fruit is when it's tended well. And um, then your fruit can help others. This is grape juice that I canned from my own grapes. And my kids, they like to mix this with some fizzy water and um, have little grape drinks. And it's healthy and it's wholesome, full of vitamin C and all that. And seeing this helps me to see that I've done a good job taking care of my vineyard and it's inspiring me to prune what needs to be pruned um, on myself and ask God to do the pruning and to lead the pruning. So what are some of the things that you need to prune in yourself? Especially in this time of year. I mean, maybe it is a clutter thing just like me. Maybe it's, um, you rely on gossip. Maybe you rely on, um, something else to get through your day. Maybe you, you are also like me and have a really hard time, um, with scrolling on the phone all the time. Is there something that you could do that is more spiritually constructive? So, I am just going to take out my little doodle page, and I am going to just kind of give myself a couple minutes to doodle on this guy, and see what kind of things I can think of. help me to uh, prune the vineyard, so to speak. I hope that you guys are able to also
come up with something that would be helpful to you this week. Our next video is going to be on the second reading for the first Sunday of Advent. And that is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. So in the next video, we will be chatting about 1 Corinthians. So leave your notes. Enjoy the doodles. Let me know if you can think of anything that you um, would like me to add into videos and um, what you would really like to see from a virtual situation like this. If there's anything that we can do to make it more fun, more beautiful, more spiritually fulfilling, and have more fellowship. God bless you all. I hope you have a lovely day and um, a blessed weekend. And we'll see you in just a couple days.